tutorial complete. Of the people who escaped the initial attack on the camp, many perished in the deadly underground dungeons. Others pressed on, their determination to survive outweighing the odds. The odds being goats. That's right, goats. All right, so here we are, and tutorial two is easy. A fresh new adventurer inside a fresh new dungeon. Here is hoping that this brave explorer is more fortunate than the last. Let's get straight to business by attacking the warlock. No goats? All right, so let's go fight this warlock. Not too shabby, but it'd be great to improve your odds against these foes somehow. Try searching the dungeon for power-ups. Games like these always have them. I bet they're coming. Warning, attack power-ups ahead. Use only in cases of extreme emergency and or damage dissatisfaction. This is definitely a case of damage dissatisfaction. Let's get it. All right, so I'm at five damage and now um, I'm up to six. When you walk over an attack power-up, it permanently increases your damage by 10%. Oh, okay. It don't, it does, it's not plus one like I was saying before. It's just 10%. If you're lucky enough to grab one, grab it as soon as possible. So we got two, and they stacked. Sweet. More damage. So let's fight this guy. Now we kill him in one shot. You've become decidedly more effective in combat. Note how it only took you a single strike to fell that opponent as opposed to two previously. Efficient, indeed. Standard Adventure Constitution Boosters for heroes who want to be more constituent. Is this more health? Indeed. So we just got plus two health. Health power-ups operate in the same way that attack power-ups do, but increase your maximum health instead of your damage. Note that they won't actually heal you, so don't just leave them lying around. Feels constituent. All right. Now this guy is physical resist, so he's going to actually be quite difficult for us. If you haven't done so already, take a look at the enemy area on the top right of the screen. It offers a lot of valuable information, including enemy stats and combat strike predictions. You'll end up looking here a lot once you become more familiar with the game systems. Looking top right. All right, so he doesn't care about physical attacks. So we'll kill him, but he does a lot of damage to us. Arcane amplifiers, useful for spell casting and alliterative endeavors. I bet this is mana. You love those alliterative endeavors. Mana power-ups increase your maximum mana by one. This is particularly valuable because mana doesn't increase with character level. Oh, okay. So this is, again, why I'm doing the tutorial. To solidify some of these points, it, my memory of... I mean, I played Desktop Dungeons the original, like, 15 years ago. Something wild like that. So... It's not just the warrior type, if that's what this is, that doesn't get mana on level up. It's everybody. Um, this is so we'll cover spell casting and mana use a little later. Yep, bonus mana. All right. Oh, for the love of Tarog, another goat? No, this is rubbish. You need to find another way out of the dungeon. Ignore the goat and follow the side passage. Yes, ignore it. Go over here. And now this is more like it. You've just discovered a dungeon exit. Retiring early isn't the most glorious way to end a session, but sometimes it's your only choice, unless you count Impaled by Killer Goat as a valuable option. I don't. Let's escape. So click here when you're ready to leave. Beware getting cut off from an exit will force you to surrender the current dungeon run. Ouch. Let's retire. All right. We, got, we completed the next tutorial. Congratulations on your dungeon survival. I was also involved in that dreadful caravan attack, but managed to avoid harm by hiding in my obscure documents closet. Your experiences have made one thing clear to the rest of the survivors. If there is to be any hope for us, we need to band together in a base of operations. We need a kingdom. And so this is kind of what we were talking about before with uh, just a guy about like building a, a base or whatever. This is it. We need to make a kingdom. Um, all right, um, ambitious. To make this anything more than a lowly adventuring band's dream, you'll need to secure funds for development. Your survival and experience have inspired hope in the members of this camp, and they've voted to put you in charge. Oh, no. It's time to gather the rabble and loot some dungeons. Delegating looting, I like it. 
As our newly elected kingdom administrator, I think you could do with a little help from a professional advice mongerer such as myself. Why don't I help you along with this whole securing our immediate future thing? Um, finger cross pose. Are you ready to send someone on their next adventure? Just select a dungeon and we'll get filling out your hero's permit form. Okay. Uh, tutorial 3 is easy, so we'll select it. Great. Just confirm your selection here. It's a legal requirement of our selection confirmation committee. I bet it is. It says, Tutorial 3. This dungeon will introduce you to spellcasting and glyph conversion. Fantastic. There's a random boss. Do it. Ah, here we go. Now it's really coming out. Now let's go about recruiting your next dungeon hero. You'll need to select two things, kin and class. For now, just choose the human because, well, nobody else is around yet. All right? So I'll choose human. Now human is the kin, and it says they get a te plus 10% attack bonus for every 100 conversion points. So it's not that it's a warrior, that that's the conversion bonus. It's kin. Okay. Class says... A wise and excellent non-decision, mighty administrator. Yes, that was a non-decision. I love how this guy's always winking. He's just like, I'm going to give you gnomish sass for the rest of your life. My bow tie and... I can't tell if those are lapels or if those are shoulder pads. It's an impressive look. All right, so let's select guard so it has no special abilities. Your new hero has been bureaucratically cleared. Have them sally forth by hitting the play button. Indeed. Okay, so here we go. And let's see. Welcome to uh, hero to the legendary dungeon of hidden treasures. While exploring, why not help yourself to a complimentary glyph of fiery doom? Who doesn't want that? Don't mind if I do. Congratulations, you've just found your first glyph spell. These ancient and potent artifacts will allow you to channel your magical essence into a variety of tasks. In this case, clicking on things and making them go boom. That is my favorite task. Click on the pickup button that's appeared in the side panel, and the glyph will move to your inventory. You may also press spacebar on your keyboard or double click on the item in the dungeon view. Okay, so mine soon. So I'll just push spacebar and we picked it up. It's time to put your newly discovered magic skills to the test. Click on the spell glyph in your inventory, then click on your target. Not only does it make a satisfying explosion, but casting spells won't let enemies retaliate. And this is the, the major thing. Um, click glyph, click target, gotcha. So I'm going to click one and then just click that guy. He blew up. And we'll do it again. Oh man, that's great. If you're running out of mana, explore the dungeon to regenerate. This works similarly to health regeneration. Explore to regenerate. All right, we'll go down here. Passage not open to standard tour. Please do not enter, particularly if you're the type who would readily steal lots and lots of gold. I love it. That won't. That sign is like music to my ears. Crispy. As you level up, your spell damage will increase. It usually won't hit as hard as a regular attack, but the fact that enemies can hit you back is a major plus. Great balls of fire. All right, and let's step down here. And we can explore more of the dungeon. So this spiral staircase going down is more dungeon. Now there's an enemy over here that we can see, but we can't get to it. So let's click go and see what, oh my goodness, lava level. All right, well, there's gold over here. I'm sure it's free and not trapped. Yeah, we're picking up money. Uh-oh, it sounds like the treasure room was a trap. You don't say. You hear something big and heavy sliding into place from the dungeon above. That's worrying. It is worrying. Let's see if we can go up. Okay, yeah, it, the doorway changed, and now we can get to this level two. This creature is blocking your exit and seems to be immune to magic. Your spell glyph won't be of much use here, so why not convert it? Conversion is a neat way to recycle any unwanted inventory items. Click and hold your mouse button over the glyph, then drag it to the conversion icon in the bottom left corner of the screen. All right, bye, Fireball. So this is another cool part about the game is that you have to make decisions like this where you need to sacrifice 
equipment at times to get a damage boost. Because this guy um, has 21 hit points, and I do 10 damage. But if I sack this, now I do 11 damage, and I can kill this guy in two shots. Great stuff. Doing this to items fills up your conversion bar. Once full, your character gains a stat boost. One glyph is usually enough to fill the bar. In this case, converting should have given you enough extra attack power to deal with the golem. Defeat it and leave the dungeon with your hard-won cash. Attack time. Punch him in the face. Punch him back. We've got him. He's dead. Celebrate. Retire. Excellent direction of our efforts bold administrator the bounty from that dungeon can now be put to good use if your fledgling kingdom is to survive beyond its first few weeks it will need a reliable and well-trained force of heroes to keep the terrors of this land at bay couldn't have done it without you you're too kind your new position gives you responsibility over our collected funds and efforts this represents the resources we've managed to scrounge together so far. So in the bottom right, it says I have 150 kingdom gold. Is that all? Your current task is ensuring our survival. So I recommend investing our limited funds in training and arming some real defenders. Click on the outpost over here, all right? Uh, so I click on this guild, I guess. Upgrade this structure by clicking on the helpfully labeled button here. I will. This will allow us to start recruiting our first available hero type, the fighter. Heck yeah. Upgrade complete. Kingdom Administrator, remember this moment well, for you have just taken your first tentative steps down a long and glorious path. Under your guidance, we'll build a kingdom to challenge the gods themselves. Now, I don't really want to do that. We're just trying to look, find a place to survive after the caravan attack, right? too early for a statue admirable clicking and spending noble administrator you've just unlocked the fighter class these hardy warriors are superior to common guards in several ways they excel at hunting down opponents and gaining experience quickly good so we've now have a new class that we can be and this is when the game really starts to take off because you can customize more at least i'm hoping it's it's very much a gated tutorial which is necessary, of course, but let's see how it goes. Quest unlocked trophy hunting. Administrator, our scouts have discovered a monster lair in the surrounding area. It is time to take the fight to them. Let's have our heroes earn their keep. They can return when they have some monster heads and or souvenirs of victory. Bring me loot. Hey, Power. Good evening, my friend. Good to see you. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I hope you're well. Oh, look at this guy with a luchador mask on. Um, well, that sounds like an interesting prospect. Oh, sorry for butting in. We'll chat later. Who was that? All right, so now it's time for tutorial four. This dungeon will introduce you to inventory management and boss trophies. Let's do it. Oh, wait. Um, cancel. What's this quest that it said? Uh, trophy hunting. Oh, okay. It just means that we're doing that quest by going here. All right. So we're going to select Kin, and now we could be a fighter. Now that guard class is gone. Fighters sense enemies further away in the fog, which is good. And they're veterans, which means they gain experience with attack by higher level enemies, and less experience is needed per level. And it says, Pit Dog, Dungeon Run, start with one level of standard death protection on the character. Now, I don't know what that means. We'll find out. That's great, Power. All right, we're going in. Here it is. Your Hour of Triumph. Your goal in this dungeon is simple. Find the goat boss, slay it, and leave the dungeon with its horns as proof of your deed. Not only will you prove yourself ready to move on from the annoying tutorials, but you'll become a new kingdom's first celebrated hero. Horny for heroism. I don't think so. I'm above puns. Wow. I love, like, look how cool she looks. I love the uh, art style in this game. It's, it's really fun. Okay. So, death protection says protection against a killing blow. So this is a really cool ability because this is one that you can exploit intentionally to help you survive and fight a higher level enemy 
to get the veteran bonus uh, benefit, for example. Oh, power. That's a good question. No, um, that is not necessarily accurate. That I just haven't updated my Twitch schedule, my friend. I'm still deciding when I uh, will play Dyson again. We're stepping here. Aha! You've treated to the welcome sight of a burn day raise, Glyph. Add it to your inventory the same way you did last time. Use that pickup button. Got it. I'm just going to push spacebar, actually. And, ooh, a sword. Just like Glyph's, items such as weapons and armor can be added to your inventory. Most items will be considered, quote, in use as soon as you pick them up. There's usually no need to specifically equip them. Grab the sword and check the improvement to your damage rating. All right, so my damage right now is five, and it says equip on pickup. Cool. So I'll pick it up, and yep, I just got plus two damage for having this. That's fantastic. And step over here, and we found a shield. Keep picking up items as you find them, and note how they start filling your inventory space. Differently sized items will eat up space accordingly. No inventory Tetris, which I'm actually glad of. So this shield does what? It says minus two damage taken. Wow, that's very good. Um, and this is a health necklace. Okay, great. Tremendous. So we got plus 10 health. Let's kind of zoom out a little bit using the mouse wheel. And we got a mana necklace. You can convert items on the ground using the convert button instead of putting them in your inventory first, but beware, conversion is an irreversible process and you'll never get the item back. Convert what's not needed. I'll pick this up and we'll go here. Potions are a special kind of stackable item that take up far less space than most other items. Having lots of them is always nice. Indeed, potions stack, that's great. All right, so we're at 26 out of 30 inventory space. The dreaded goat waits for you at the end of this corridor. No hints and no hand-holding. Use a combination of your item spells and character skills and see if you can defeat it and take its horn. Why is it always goats? Bleat. Good goat. All right, so we're going to use everything we've got to beat this thing. No problem. There's nothing else you can see to even pick up. So I'm going to step over here, and I'm going to just start off by fireballing right away they also uncovered the whole map so we can't get any exploration bonus and i will shoot again all right we got this guy down and what we could do is convert this for 35 and convert this for 100 yeah i'm going to convert my all we need to do is kill this guy so because all i need to do is kill the goat I can actually convert Burn Day Raz. I don't want to if it was a longer dungeon, but I'm never going to use it again. So we just dump it in there, um, and we got ourselves a 10% damage bonus. Um, so we could also convert some more stuff to get there, but for now, I'm just going to attack it. It hits us. Okay, we get down to 10. Now, it will not kill us this shot, so we hit again and I can use a potion to guarantee that we survive or I can just use my oh it already used my um it factored it in my death protection so I have to use a potion right now and then um he's going to do 12 damage so I actually have to use two potions and then now we are going to win well done hero the goat has dropped a trophy for you to claim Grabbing a monster trophy ends the dungeon session, but you can hang around as long as you want before taking it. It is a lovely place. No, we just grab it and go. Perfect, we got it. Victory, your her hero parades through the muddy streets of your rapidly growing settlement. Goat horn clasped in one mailed fist, rose petals and jubilant shouts alike fill the air as townsfolk come out to celebrate. Amidst the glee, a lone figure approaches you as you recline in your administrator's parade viewing chair. Sounds like a nice chair. New throne? Who dares? Hi there. I can't help but notice the sheer amount of fun that you're all having with that chunk of monster skull. I happen to have a business proposal related to that. 
I'm listening. This may seem rather forward, but I was once a renowned taxidermist in the surrounding realms, and I know a lot of very rich buyers who would love a mounted beastie head of some kind hanging over their fireplace. Bragging rights, see? I love how this guy was a renowned taxidermist. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Um, I mean, it makes sense. I, I'm not trying to diminish the subtle art of, well, it's not subtle, but the art of taxidermy. But it's just a surprising claim. And this guy also is a very disturbing in appearance. And the idea he was once means like I, I'm just projecting this, but it seems perhaps that there was a scandal and he was forced to, you know, leave in the middle of the night to avoid some kind of public execution or something. And his taxidermy skills were lost, but he's going to reclaim them on the black market. Why do I care? Long story short, I'd like to buy that trophy from you. I have the gold right here. How much gold? This new kingdom needs some kind of regular income, right? Well, work with me and we can build an entire economy around hunting and slaying evil. Yeah, that's, that's the important part. I'm pretty sure that this will turn into a long and mutually profitable relationship. I love how I'm like, yeah, yeah, just keep the gold coming. New trophy sold. You sold the goat horn for 150 gold. This is called Taxidermy Unlimited. Welcome to your kingdom's very own stuffing establishment. Here's a collection of monster samples found by the realm's adventurers. As you collect boss trophies and bring them out of the dungeon, the taxidermist will automatically buy them from you. The market value of a trophy varies, usually dependent on how frequently you kill a given monster. Wow, that's kind of interesting. So the prices fluctuate, and so if I hunt the same monster again and again, it floods the market, perhaps, and the price will go down. I like that. All right, so you can see over here the trophies. I've sold it, and we got a bunch of money. Unlocked Guild Expansion. There's more than one way to slay the average dungeon monstrosity, and the kingdom's population is one of diverse talents and interests. Magic users, holy men, and even common cut purses are interested in fighting the good fight, especially if there's money involved. Oh yeah, how do we recruit them? Monster trophies are a valuable source of kingdom income. Let's put that money to use by building ourselves a second guild. Our options are upgrading the structure will give you priests. They're reliable slayers of the undead with impressive health buffs. Holy folk. Upgrading this structure will give you wizards. They start off with a free fireball. Lower mana costs and other abilities make their glyphs use much easier. And nice hats too. And upgrading this structure will give you thieves. They excel at squeezing extra value out of dungeon resources and deal a little extra damage to unsuspecting opponents. Hide the silver. Select a building to upgrade now. Well, I have to say this is an interesting choice. I believe when I did this before, when I was playing the demo, I mean, I chose wizards because I love wizards, but I think maybe um, I should choose thieves because maybe they get more money and then I can use that to upgrade more, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to take the thief den and let's see what this says. Um, oh, I can't mouse over this uh, to figure it out. I'll upgrade it. It's fine. Class unlocked thief. Great. And we completed the quest. And oh my goodness. Our brave new kingdom is still in grave peril. The denizens of nearby dungeons are breathing down our necks. If a brave hero wanders in and slays the leaders in each area, the rest should be demoralized enough to scatter. Attack! Again. Most autonomous and independently thinking administrator, I believe you've learned enough to start performing kingdom duties in whichever way you see most fit. I'll still be on hand to advise you when new matters come up, but from here you may consider your decisions and opportunities somewhat more open. Have fun. 
Let's give him the finger crossbows again. I love this. All right. So now we've basically completed the tutorial to a degree. And we're ready to rock. And we have Thousand Cuts. We have the Badlands. And we have Vince's Vault. And they're all labeled as easy. So let's just see what Vincent's Vault is all about. Um, you fight Vince the Invincible. Okay. Uh, and what about here at Thousand Cuts? Sir Digby. Okay. So it's always a goat. Um, close. And at the Badlands, it's another goat. It's always goats. All right. So let's. Um, I'm going to right click to get out of that. Let's go to the vault. Let's do that one. Go for it. Oh, my God. Select it. Yes. All right. We're going to be human. I'm going to try my new thief. Okay. So thieves deal an extra 30% damage to enemies with full health. There's 33% more items on the map. And all health and mana potions restore both health and mana. Okay, interesting. So I don't know if I'm going to get more money with the thief, but they, it's just fun to try. I definitely will get more items, which potentially I can sell. I'm not sure how it works, but we're just going to go ahead and say, play a human thief. All right, so here we are. You're playing as a human thief. Humans get a 10% attack bonus for every 100 conversion points. Indeed. Thieves have these abilities, which we just looked at. Got it. Okay. So, uh, looks like there is a biceps <laughs> spell. Boost your next melee attack with a 30% damage bonus. Strike erodes 3% resistances. Um, adds might 1. Oh, wow. So, think about how good this ability is in conjunction with our first strike Um 30% damage to enemies with full health. So, like, if we pick this up, if we go ahead and biceps and then first strike, it should be insane. Oh, there's another biceps. Now, I don't know why we... Oh, they're saying convert it immediately, basically, because you don't need two of these. And I don't. They're not on cooldown or anything. So, this... What did we get? Oh, yeah, we get more damage, okay. All right, so we got the 10% damage boost. Let's just pick up money. Power-ups like these only improve maximum stats and have few short-term benefits. So pick them up as soon as possible. Okay, so let's pick this up. Let's get the extra mana. Get the gold, get the damage. Hey, adventurer, hey, over here. Yeah, it's me, the dungeon boss. Come on, just try and hit me with a fireball. I dare you. Ha, 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 you suck. Regards, Vince the Invincible. Hey, Alucard, good evening. Good to see you. Roast goat sounds good. That's right. We can get some falafel, some euros up here. All right, uh, let's pick this up. This is one of fight. Summons ex existing enemy, adding s slow debuff, retaliation, strike second. Um, okay, pick it up. And we'll pick this up, but we're going to convert it. We don't need two. And we are now, um, you know, getting a 30% damage boost. I'm going to pick up the, as many power-ups as I can. Let's level up before we fight this guy. Oh, and this is why he's talking about a fireball. He has 50% magic resistance, indeed. All right. Well, to be honest, maybe thieves do get more money. If gold that's lying on the dungeon floor is considered a dungeon item, I'm going to pick this up, pick this up, then indeed. All right, we'll go ahead and pick this up. This one, we're just going to convert. Pick this up, 